Appreciate everybody being here. Welcome. Um, I won't talk about the select group that played the other day, but welcome to see everybody's whole and healthy. Uh, obviously, it's been a uh, busy summer. Um, <laughs> did a heck of a job, though. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You know, Will and, and Mike spoke on that, you know, the other day quite at, uh, at some length. But, uh, you know, a lot of changes uh, organizationally, reshape of the roster. But, um, you know, three months into this new transition, it's, uh, it's almost go. And it's a, it's a very exciting time. Um, there's been a lot of energy, great vibe in the gym. Um, you know, having the few weeks, months to connect with players, new staff, uh, continue to build and, and uh, collaborate with uh, Mike and Will. So uh, I'm ready to go. And I'm excited that, you know, we're you're right around the corner from next Tuesday. Uh, be interesting to see how all this comes together, starting with camp. Go ahead. Start with Ava. Hey, Wes. Obviously, um, this is not at all a one-to-one -one compared to your experience when you started in Denver. But it is kind of the more you're you're building, you're working towards something. The emphasis is on player development. I wonder how much. Um, of the mindset feels familiar, where you had to kind of get yourself back in the place of like, okay, this is this is a different starting point. I know how to approach that. Like, how much did you reach back to your Denver days to kind of um, get yourself in the groove for this season? Well, I don't think the the player development piece changes a ton. Um, it's always you know got to be a priority with um, you know what we do on a daily basis. Um, to your question, to your point, you know, it, it does feel similar in nature. Um, you know, looking back at how that played out for Denver <laughs> gives you, you know, you know, down the road a little hope. But uh, it's different. You know, the process is different. The detail of it is different. Um, and to to Mike and Will's credit, I think they really dive wholeheartedly in that side of uh, uh, the organization. You know, the prioritizing development um, is going to be a huge key for us to kind of forge this thing forward. What's your feel of the roster so far? You obviously have, on one end, Bilal, who's super, super young. You have a guy like Denny, who's kind of been around for a while, but has more development ahead of him, of course. How do you, what's your feel so far for where your starting point is in working with these guys? It's um, interesting when you think about, I think, eight guys on this roster right now that are 24 or younger. Um, we have a handful of uh, veteran guys, but there's a mix even within the, the, the youth group of experience, you know, Jordan Poole has won a championship, you know, at age 24. Obviously, you think about, you know, Coos has won a championship, and you know, he's 27, 28. Um, Tyus has played in, in meaningful games, high-level playoff games. Uh, he still, to me, is a young bet. Um, and you got guys, you know, kind of like Gallo, Taj, um, Mike Muscala, who've been part of, you know, playoff teams and played in uh, high-level moments. So I think the the mixture of that group. Uh, you see how it's played out on, you know, within the open runs. You, you got a very competitive mix. Um, and you know, that, that, that's probably what excites me most. Hello, Wes. Um, with player development this year, will it look different um, when it comes to patience? Last year, Johnny's played a lot in the G League and didn't take his knocks at, in the NBA. So like this year, will Bilal just be up with the uh, Wizards instead of with the go-go to develop? Well, I think it's going to be both. Um, he, 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 along with some, you know, all of our guys are going to have an opportunity. Um, you know, as part of the player development, you want to see it play out in, in real minutes. So I think it's important to get those young guys opportunity when you can. Um, you know, it, it, at some point, you know, you're going to need them to contribute. So how else to, to get those you know, real game moments, that feel, other than getting out on the floor and having an opportunity to play. Johnny coming into year two, uh, reasonable expectation that he'll be a rotational guy, or, or are you considering this is his rookie year? Um, I'm not going to put that expectation in writing. Um, I want to see how competitive we are as a group through camp. Some of those decisions will shake themselves out. Um, but, you know, like I said before, I think there are there's going to be opportunity for each guy, you know, and I think uh, Johnny, Bilal, even Corey and Denny, you know, are, are young, but they're all ready to take a step forward. What's your prognostication on Kuz and his role for the team this year as a leader? 
Well, he stepped into that role well, when we acquired him, you know, two two seasons ago. Um, I think it's it's still going to be a leadership by committee, uh, but you know, with uh, he along with Jordan, both guys will kind of quarterback our offense, uh, you know, along with Tyus. So um, with that comes a great responsibility to perform at a high level, to be efficient, but also help get their teammates involved. Hi, Wes. Um, what decisions do you anticipate having to make about the starting lineup rotation and the roster as you look ahead to opening night? Well, um, there, there are a lot of decisions. Um, you know, we, we talk about, you know, best fit. You, know, you want to put your best players out on the floor as much as you can, but uh, to the previous question, you also want to find ways to carve out minutes for young guys to get uh, opportunity. Um, you know, we're going to be patient with our young guys. We're not going to rush it. Um, but I, that's part of the development, internal maturation to, to see it play out. Uh, those decisions, I think, will kind of play themselves through once we get through camp for preseason games. Uh, we have some time, obviously, before we see Indiana on opening night. So I, I think we'll, we'll take, a, take our time and play with different lineups. Um, Different uh, different groups and pairings to see what works best. Danilo Gallinari, I, I believe, has a history with winger Doc and Schling and yourself, uh, as well as uh, Vanderpool and uh, yeah, right, and, and Blair. Yeah. So, what do you think about uh, his acquisition? What he could do for this team, and also if we if there's anything we should know about his ACL rehab. Um, I'm not going to comment on the medical side. He looks good to me, uh, <laughs> um, but. I had him in Denver, so you know you get a little bit insight on who he is as a person. He's a great, great guy. He's a competitor. Um, obviously, he's had varying experiences playing with a young team, playing you know alongside a group of contending um, players. Um, he's a stretch big, and you know whether he's at the four, he's at the five. He's going to put pressure on the defense with his ability to stretch the floor, shoot the three. Uh, he's a smart, high IQ player. He's got some toughness, so. Um, all that wrapped in, you know, a quality human being, I think, is a, you know, great start. Wes, for people who haven't uh, seen Tyus Jones a lot, what are some of the capabilities that he brings to the team and and into the locker room? Uh, his leadership, of course. I mean, he, he's essentially a coach on the floor. Um, I think. If you don't know, is he's, he's one of the best as far as his turnover ratio. He's not going to turn the ball over. He's steady. Um, he's going to give you a sense and a presence, um, essentially being an, ext an extension of myself and the coaching staff. Um, but you know, he, he's also you know he, he can score the ball. You know, dynamic pick and roll player. Shot the three. I think 37 percent last year, 39 percent the year before. So um, he's got the ability to stretch the defense as well. Um, and I think you know when teams want to go under, he, he can shoot shoot off the bounce. Obviously, uh, create action on and off the ball. So uh, I'm excited to see uh, you know where he is and how much he can bring. I believe that you have 17 people for the 15-man roster on guaranteed deals. How do you go about uh, willing, whittling down the roster, which is something the team is going to have to do before opening night? Yeah, I think just healthy competition. Um, and I think it's, you know, you, you'll give everybody an opportunity. And, you know, we'll have plenty of practices. I know it felt a little compressed last year. With our travel schedule, but uh, plenty of practices. You know, this this preseason, uh, four preseason games, to kind of bet through some things. But everyone will have ample opportunity. Wes, twofold for you. I'll ask the first one and then follow up for you. Michael and Will touched on the player development aspect, but I wanted to also ask you what went into reshaping and retooling your coaching staff, bringing in a guy like Vanderpool, Brian, kind of shifting what some of the guys who are already here, their roles were obviously losing some people. What went into that decision for you, and how do you see that st starting off with training camp? Uh, yeah, I think um, you know. I think what's lost is you know, we had some guys who were coveted by other teams, and so when those opportunities come up, some some tough conversations, and you never want to lose quality uh, members of your staff. But you know, unfortunately, we did. Um, so there were some vacancies we had to fill. Um, it was a long process. You know, it was collaborative in nature. Um, sat down with those two guys and vetted out close to a dozen candidates. Um, you know, um, some I had relationships with, some I didn't. Um, so, really, kind of taking a deep dive into the character. You know, um, 
obviously basketball acumen, the player development side of it. Um, and, and two guys we seem to kind of keep coming back to were Brian and, and DV. Um, you know, both from different, you know, backgrounds, but um, they, they've proven to be able to develop, you know, young players, have relationships with um, marquee players in this NBA and uh, in the NBA and have been a part of winning, you know, franchises. So, you know, it checks a lot of boxes, you know, personality fit, character fit, the work ethic. Um, so I, I couldn't speak uh, highly enough about either of them. And the follow up to that with the go go and the relationship that you had last season with Mike and Amber and the development of Jordan Goodwin, who's had a lot of success now, obviously Johnny. Um, how do you then take the development aspect with such a young squad, trying to get guys minutes, trying to make sure they're developing on a nightly basis, utilizing both your staff and Cody's staff, but still having the focus on the development aspect, mm -hmm. but not just from a, okay, what are you doing on the floor, but how are we seeing the success translate to 48 minutes in 82 games? Yeah, um, you know, I think Will probably detailed it and he'll do a better job than I will now, but. You know, that holistic approach of surrounding a guy, um, giving them as much re reinforcement and resources we, we possibly can, you know, from ev every aspect, even before they step between the lines. Uh, I think that's oftentimes overlooked as part of a player's development. Uh, the nutrition, the strength conditioning, the mindfulness, um, you know, those areas are oftentimes underserved. But, you know, really kind of making sure those areas are checked uh, we'll take care of the basketball stuff. And I think that's the unique approach about what we're trying to build um, to get guys to create these habits, you know, habits across their, the whole spectrum you know, of their lives, um, which then will allow them to, you know, to really streamline their focus into basketball. Afternoon, Coach. Um, you mentioned um, Coos and Poole leading the offense on the floor. I think there might be a little bit less clarity on who the vocal slash moral leader of the team will be. So, you know, let's say, God forbid, the team goes into halftime down by, like, 12 points. Won't happen. <laughs> okay, right. Good to know. Um, who do you foresee being the first guy to rally the team together and speak up, and why? Well, I mean, once again, you're learning new, new guys. There's an injection of a lot of new voices, and, I, you know, I don't want, uh, you know, someone to be ordained a leader and, and forced to feel that it's all heaped on them. I think there's leadership by committee. Some guys are great with their voice. Um, other guys are lead by example. So I think the combination of both those areas, you know, I think, um, you know, even a guy like Corey, you know, uh, a young guy, it's okay. And I think we're trying to empower more and more guys to take onus uh, and take ownership of, of the locker room, take ownership of the group. Um, and I think that's a, that's a healthy balance. And speaking of Corey, just with such a deep room on the wing with guys like Corey, Denny, Bilal, Gallo, all those guys, what do you think that the younger guys like that can do to stand out? And what are you sort of looking for in terms of giving those guys more playing time? What can they do to get more playing time as the season goes on? Well, they're going to have to earn it. <laughs> well, bottom line, I think, um, uh, you know, we'll sit down. I'll sit down with, with each player uh, kind of mapping out specific roles. These are the things that I feel uh, you do well. These are the things I need you to do. And these are the ways you're going to find minutes on the floor. Um, you know, with that, we'll map out some, some individual goals uh, that correlate to, you know, some of their skill development stuff. But, you know, you know, the bottom line, their role won't change a whole lot. You know, some of the goals may shift, may increase. Um, but, you know, I think guys who dive into uh, embracing, you know, what that is, you know, those are the ones who wind up, you know, finding the minutes. On the holistic kind of whole person development, um, how does that look for somebody like a teenager, an international teenager like Bilal? Um, has the organization um, added in a new person to, you know, kind of help him just adjust to not only adulthood, being sure. a professional basketball player, but like, how does that look like specifically for an international teenager? It, for him, but all our young guys, you know, it, it, it kind of it takes a village. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think... He's further along than I think most people want to give him credit for in some of these other areas. You know, he's, he's played professionally. Um, but still, you know, he's playing in a new country, new style of play. Um, you know, there, there's some things on the floor that are going to be different, you know, subtle subtleties in the rules, um, the pace of it, the physicality of it, you know, all feels different for all rookies. Um, so I think it's, you know, it, it's incumbent on us to just kind of bring him along slowly. Just, um, and I've seen him grow. 
even since you know we got him in in June, where he developed through summer league, what he's shown us thus far, you know, in the off season is is positive, but it's a forecast. So we're going to take it slow and try to make sure that he's he's comfortable with each step that we take. Kind of a follow up on the emerging as leaders. Were you aware of any player inviting all the guys to get together at a place? And uh, working out or just getting together sometime this off season. Yeah, it happened, that happened quite often, honestly, and, that, and that's a terrific sign. And it wasn't always the same person. So the you know, the fact that it happened organically, you know, guys wanted to connect. Uh, that does wonders for not only your culture but the chemistry of a group. Um, yeah, when they they do it, you know, on the, on their own, and it's not just between the lines or in a workout. The guys are hanging out, having dinner. You know, they want to go out and have fun. I think it's terrific. Just curious, who? Um, I'm not going to mention names, but the, it, it happened quite often, and there were a handful of different individuals who kind of spearheaded the movement. Coach, uh, you talked about the mix. You touched on the mix of the roster already with the the vets. You have quite a few young guys who've yet to play three years in this league. Uh, with that in mind, looking on the defensive side of the ball, what's it going to take for this group to improve on that end? Uh, quite a bit, honestly, um, and I'm not going to hold on to you know what we did last year. I think that's unfair to bring that into a new setting with a new group. Um, but we, you know, we, we certainly want to take steps forward in that area. Uh, it's it's an individual and it's a collective mindset. I've said that since day one, and I think just watching these guys, I think they take more pride collectively in doing that. Um, so that you know that that's a start. You know, schematically, we're going to make some changes. Yeah, I think to help. Uh, augment, you know, some of the roster moves, but um, I, I just think it's one of those um, things you have to take personally. Uh, you know, it's uh, an area we all say, being the season, we want to be a top 10, top 15. Um, I just want to see us improve, you know, and where, wherever that is right now to where, it, you know, we find ourselves in April. Hey, Wes, several times this off season, Michael and Will have talked about looking upon this team with fresh eyes. So for the younger players that were here last year, maybe the year before that, how do you and the staff that has been here and seen these kids every day look upon them with fresh eyes this year? And what does that look like? Uh, it, it's actually easy. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a new group, of course. You know, uh, you want to, of course, you want those young guys to continue to maintain some of the areas where we saw progression. Uh, we saw improvement, you know, specifically the last month and a half, two months of the season. Um, I think that's a great starting point. Um, they're going to continue to make youthful mistakes, so and, that, and that's okay. I think um, we look at those as lessons and, and not failures, not mistakes, but uh, opportunities to learn and grow. Um, but I'm excited to see where they are right now, and I, I feel across the board they're better players now than they were, you know, three four months ago. As a follow up, those last ten games, those young players were given increased minutes and opportunities, do you subscribe to carry over from one season to another? As far as just the minutes? Just the positivity of what oh, these sure. kids were able to do? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think there's there's a place for that. Um, you don't forego, um, you know, the teaching, the coaching, um, the accountability piece. But, yeah, of course you want to celebrate the, the positives, um, the increase in production. Uh, I think that's an important step for all, all, all those guys. Wes, I don't know how much of a personal relationship you had with Jordan before, but I wonder what you've learned about him um, as a person, not as necessarily a player, um, since you've had him. The, the, there is a level of maturity for a 24-year-old, I think, wise beyond his years. He, he's a basketball junkie, um, you know, relentless worker. Um, I think he he's ready to step kind of into a leadership role. Um, and you can just tell how he connects with, you know, guys on the when they're playing open gym. You know, he'll see something, your quarterback's, uh, you know, a situation uh, might not go as well as he wanted. You know, two minutes later, you see him huddled over there kind of explaining, you know, what he wants and how he sees it. And I think guys really gravitate to it. So it, it's it's great to see a young guy, you know, um, maybe a change of scenery, but to see that growth, you know, in a young player this early, I think is tremendous. Is he very serious? Is he serious? There's a serious side to him, but I can't, I couldn't say he's, you know, serious. Hey, Wes, you mentioned um, that the player back here. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, you mentioned that the players are taking it upon themselves to get together and, and grow chemistry. In, in terms of having so many guys that 
maybe haven't played together before and, and you talked about that new transition you're excited for how confident and excited does that make you for the the future and the vision that you guys have for this roster that this stuff is happening already yeah you know it's, it's happening and, and it's happening organically so that's I think that's the part that, that makes me uh, most excited that um, th they're taking ownership of the group uh, I think they understand the importance of and the value of some of these things um, you know that's a leaves a cultural imprint you know so that to me is is, is going to sustain itself um, and those type of things um, you know will pay dividends you know down the line you know obviously we're going to have some moments you know and some of those moments might be tough but you know you can always kind of go back to the fact that these guys are connected and there's a relationship there's a um, there's a care factor you know not about just the result but about the the man next to you so i think that's uh that's, that's going to help us I know it might be hard to compare, but have you seen a group before leading up to a season like this that maybe seemed as connected early on as this one? Uh, at times, but not in its totality. You know, to have this many guys this early um, is exceptionally rare. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tactically speaking, how intriguing is it for you to have the push-pull of having some schemes that you have in mind for this group on both sides of the ball, but also reading and knowing your personnel and trying to form what you want as the philosophy for this team's expectations? Yeah, I think um, uh, we have the ability to play faster. Um, we've, we've got more uh, shooting on the floor, which, you know, of course, you never have enough shooting. Uh, so that part's exciting. You know, you've got dynamic guys who can make plays, who can create their own shot, play downhill. Um, and, you know, the combination of those things is, you know, it really opens up opportunities for player for a lot of players. Uh, you know, defensively, I think there are they're, they're going to be some challenges, um, but um, also foresee us junking the game up a little bit, you know, be playing a little more unconventional on both sides. Um, and I think we have the opportunity, given our construction or our constitution, to do, say, do things that are a little different. Uh, so I'm excited to kind of see what the, what that looks like you know we've had discussions and debate um as a staff um go back and forth on what we think's best you know some things that uh, we like and you know i think it's we have the freedom to try it uh, wes there was some scuttlebutt from uh european media over the summer that maybe denny was dealing with some sort of injury that prevented him from doing any sort of international uh competition how is he physically and has he uh, been participating in any of these open gym runs uh, of five on five or three on three yeah he, he looks good um, you know he looks strong um, I think he had a tremendous summer um, you know it's you get an open gym and the, you know, there's some guys probably nursing some bumps and bruises but you know I don't think I don't foresee you know any issues as far as availability as uh, when we get to next Tuesday but uh, guys will get through physicals over the next day, and um, you know we'll see where it shakes out. Hey, Coach, uh, two things you really hammered home towards the end of last season and also over the summer was that you wanted this team to play with faster pace, mm -hmm. and you want to take and make more threes. A lot of the off-season acquisitions that this team made, like Patrick Baldwin, Shamit Poole, uh, they really fit into that sort of mantra. So A, how happy were you that those guys came aboard? And B, how do you foresee that sort of playing itself out with these new guys fitting into that style of play? Um, yeah, I think it'll, it'll fit in seamlessly. You know, I think um, those weren't, you know, edicts, you know, that I sent to Michael and Will. I think it just played out that way. So uh, I'm p certainly pleasantly surprised and, and happy to acquire guys with those abilities. Uh, but it, those abilities also suit their, their talent. And, you know, looking at, you know, putting Tyus in situations where he's most comfortable, putting Jordan, you know, in situations where he's excelled in the past, you know, um, you know I think that's, that's smart. That's good coaching. So um, we want to make sure to put these guys in position to have success. And, you know, obviously uh, areas where they're most comfortable is probably where they will excel. Will referred to Jordan Poole as a pre-prime player, and it was in the context of his age, but the indication was that there's more upside to tap into. How do you guys plan to explore that upside? Uh, well, I think just the level of freedom that he'll have. Um, you know, it's a different situation than where he came, and, and he's going to have some opportunities maybe he didn't have in the past. So I think uh, that alone is going to just show us 
you know, you know, maybe allow him to take an, uh, another step. Um, the leadership piece, of course, is going to look different for him for him uh, than maybe a year ago, and you know, I think that's growth. But um, it, it'll be exciting to see where where it takes us. Wes, uh, after your first season, you told Anscape that through a non-playoff year, one of the positives that you found was joy and purpose, just, I guess, in the process. This year, with all the new players, the development, you said the wins might not come right away. How do you keep that joy and purpose, not only for yourself, but Jordan and Kuz have won championships. Mm -hmm. The younger players are coming from college, and they've had success. How do you keep that for them? Uh, yeah, I think it's you know measuring and tracking the little wins. You know, I think... Those might not show up in the box score. Um, those might not be the highlight on you know certain net network channel. But um, no, I think there's, <laughs> I do think there's ways to incentivize what we want, uh, what we prioritize, and what we'll celebrate. Um, so the, you know some of those will be internal measurements. You know, can a guy improve incrementally from day to day, week to week, month to month? Um, some of that. Your development will happen organically. Some of it, you know, might not translate onto the floor. Uh, but I think those are simple ways of, of kind of tracking and measuring success.